Aristarchus of Samos was an ancient Greek astronomer and mathematician who presented the first known model that placed the Sun at the center of the known universe with the Earth revolving around it. He was influenced by Philolaus of Croton, but he identified the central fire with the Sun and put the other planets in their correct order of distance around the Sun. As Anaxagoras before him, he suspected that the stars were just other bodies like the Sun. His astronomical ideas were often rejected in favor of the geocentric theories of Aristotle and Ptolemy. Heliocentrism, though the original text has been lost. A reference in Archimedes' book The Sand Reckoner describes a work by Aristarchus in which he advanced the heliocentric model as an alternative hypothesis to geocentrism. Archimedes wrote, You are aware that universe is the name given by most astronomers to the sphere the center of which is the center of the Earth, while its radius is equal to the straight line between the center of the Sun and the center of the Earth. This is the common account as you have heard from astronomers. But Aristarchus has brought out a book consisting of certain hypotheses, wherein it appears, as a consequence of the assumptions made, that the universe is many times greater than the universe just mentioned. His hypotheses are that the fixed stars and the sun remain unmoved, that the earth revolves about the sun on the circumference of a circle, the sun lying in the middle of the floor, and that the sphere of the fixed stars, situated about the same center as the sun, is so great that the circle in which he supposes the earth to revolve bears such a proportion to the distance of the fixed stars as the center of the sphere bears to its surface. The sand reckoner Aristarchus suspected the stars were other suns that are very far away, and that in consequence there was no observable parallax, that is, a movement of the stars relative to each other as the Earth moves around the Sun. Since stellar parallax is only detectable with telescopes, his accurate speculation was unprovable at the time. It is a common idea that the heliocentric view was rejected by the contemporaries of Aristarchus. This is due to Giles Menninger's translation of a passage from Plutarch's On the Apparent Face in the Orb of the Moon. Plutarch reported that Cleanthus as a worshipper of the Sun an opponent to the heliocentric model, was jokingly told by Aristarchus that he should be charged with impiety. Giles Manage, shortly after the trials of Galileo and Giordano Bruno, amended an accusative with a nominative, and vice versa, so that the impiety accusation fell over the heliocentric sustainer. The resulting misconception of an isolated and persecuted Aristarchus is still transmitted today. Some facts suggest that Aristarchus' heliocentric model was an accepted theory for some centuries. It is known that a demonstration of the model was given by Seleucus of Seleucia, a Hellenistic astronomer who lived a century after Aristarchus, but no full record has been found. Pliny the Elder and Seneca refer to planets' retrograde motion as an apparent phenomenon, which is an implication of heliocentrism rather than geocentrism. Still, no stellar parallax was observed, and Ptolemy later preferred the geocentric model, which was held as true throughout the Middle Ages. The heliocentric theory was successfully revived by Copernicus after which Johannes Kepler described planetary motions with greater accuracy with his three laws. Isaac Newton later gave a theoretical explanation based on laws of gravitational attraction and dynamics. Distance to the Sun, the only surviving work usually attributed to Aristarchus on the sizes and distances of the Sun and Moon, is based on a geocentric worldview. It has historically been read as stating that the angle subtended by the Sun's diameter is 2 degrees, but Archimedes states in the Sand Reckoner that Aristarchus had a value of one half degree, which is much closer to the actual average value of 32 or 0 0.53 degrees. The discrepancy may come from a misinterpretation of what unit of measure was meant by a certain Greek term in Aristarchus' a text. Aristarchus claimed that at half-moon but, the angle between sun and moon was 87 degrees. 
he might have proposed 87 degrees as the lower bound, since gauging the lunar terminator's deviation from linearity to 1 degree accuracy is beyond the unaided human ocular limit. Aristarchus is known to have also studied light and vision, using correct geometry, but the insufficiently accurate 87 degrees datum. Aristarchus concluded that the Sun was between 18 and 20 times farther away than the Moon. The implicit false solar parallax of slightly under 3 degrees was used by astronomers up to and including Tycho Brahe. A.D. 1600, Aristarchus pointed out that the Moon and Sun have nearly equal apparent angular sizes, and therefore their diameters must be in proportion to their distances from Earth, thus, the diameter of the Sun was calculated to be between 18 and 20 times larger than the diameter of the Moon.